All right, let's get back to um, base units, derived units, prefixes. Let's take that information and then move to the next step. Now, after we have kind of a very, very small intro to things like milli, centi, kilo, deca, things like that, not deca, but deci, keep that in your mind as we move into this next section. And that next section is uncertainty in measurement. All right, let's get some notes down for uncertainty in measurement. Every measurement has some degree of uncertainty associated with it. I'm measuring something, okay, I'm not counting. If I count five apples in my hand, one, one, two, three, four, five apples, no uncertainty there. Okay, I'm not counting, I'm measuring. Anytime you measure something, there's a little bit of uncertainty involved, okay? Every measurement has some degree of uncertainty associated with it. The uncertainty depends on the precision of the measurement or even the precision of the instrument being used to do the measuring. As an example, do the following two grapefruits weigh the same? I have grapefruit one on the left and I got grapefruit two on the right, okay? Well, in one instance, if I'm using say a bathroom scale and I plop both grapefruits on the bathroom scale individually, they both weighed 1.5 pounds. They weigh the same. Now, what if I'm using a much more uh, elite measuring instrument, such as an analytical balance? Well, grapefruit one weighs 1.476, and the other guy weighs slightly over 1.5 pounds. Now they don't weigh the same. They weigh different. So the answer is, uh, do these two grapefruits weigh the same? Yes and no, okay? Yes and no. Well, why is it yes and no? Well, if you look at the first measurement on the bathroom scale, 1.5 pounds was the answer to both. We only went as far right as the tenths place, one decimal place, whereas the analytical balance, which would, it recorded the, the weight with much more precision, three decimal places, okay? So why, do, why is my answer yes and no? Because it depends on the precision of the measuring device or the instrument being used. Bathroom scale is not as precise as an analytical balance. All right, I got that little squiggly line there, which means I'm doing a different example now. It says, which measurement below has the most uncertainty associated with it? Which measurement, this is the second sentence now, which measurement is the most precise. All right, so from the, in real time, which measurement below has the most uncertainty? Which measurement is the most precise? Now, give me some time here as I sketch these two rulers. Okay, these rulers are both in centimeters, but the ruler on top, it only gives me one, two, three, and four. Those are my little graduations or tick marks. The ruler on the bottom is showing me the tenths place. So the ruler on top is only showing me the ones place, one, two, three, four. The ruler on the bottom is showing me tenths. In between each number, one, two, three, and four, I've got 10 little tick marks, okay? So the metal nail, according to the top ruler, I know for sure it's in between one and two because the one and two are tick marks. They're there, I can see them. My best guess is the eight. So this is 1.8 centimeters. Okay, that has two significant figures. First time we've seen that phrase, two significant figures. More on that in a second. The one was my certain digit. There was no guessing with that one. The 0.8, that's my best guess. That's my uncertain digit. Now, look at the bottom ruler. I know it's very tight, but trust me, if you get really, really close up, the end of that nail is for sure in between 1.8 and 1.9. And the 1.8 and the 1.9 are tick marks. They are there. I can see them. They're tiny little ticks. And then the second eight there is my guess. I guessed it was closer to 1.9 than 1.8. So now I have two certain digits instead of one, but I always have just one uncertain digit, one best guess. So this guy, 1.88 centimeters, this is three significant figures, All right? So it, you probably would have been able to guess that the second ruler, the bottom ruler, is the more precise ruler, but this is why. It produces a measurement, 1.88 centimeters, with three significant figures, 
which is more than the 1.8 centimeters above. So the measurement is the most precise, and if it's the most precise, it has the least amount of uncertainty. All right, new page of notes here. I'm continuing with those two rulers, and especially with that last statement, which was the more precise the measurement, the least amount of uncertainty associated with it. So in other words, the greater the number of significant figures, right? I had 1.88 centimeters versus just 1.8 centimeters. The greater the amount of significant figures there are, the lesser the amount of uncertainty. All right, so moving forward with this, there is a bullet point on this page and it has the following statement after the bullet point. It says, a measurement's uncertainty is expressed by the number of significant figures. And the number of significant figures, by the way, are all the known digits, all the known um, values, or the, let's call them digits, all the known digits plus my one best what? Plus your one best guess. So significant figures, it's the number of certain digits and one uncertain digit. That one uncertain digit is your best guess. So I know I'm beating this over the head here, I'm beating a dead horse here, but the second bullet point says the same thing we've seen. The greater the number of sig figs, the lower the degree of uncertainty involved in that measurement, all right? All right, so as you might expect, we are going to want to practice this, right? We're gonna do so in just a second. But I've got a third bullet point I wanna write out here about significant figures, and then we'll do practice problems on sig figs in the next video. So it says, the greater the number of significant figures, the more precise the measurement is. So these two bullet points at the end here are kind of saying the same thing. The greater the number of significant figures, the lower the degree of uncertainty in the measurement. The greater the number of significant figures, the more precise the measurement is. All right, so types of error in measurement, we're gonna talk about this in the next video, that will involve uh, significant figure practice problems. That's gonna be uh, coming up next, so stick around for that, okay? And if you like the way I do these handwritten chemistry notes, I've got the full course general chemistry, full course organic chemistry notes, and they're all available at chemistrynotes.com. So stick around, section one, video number three, coming up next.